Howdy do there, creepers and geekers. This is Chris the Atari Creep. Uh, first of all, I just want to apologize for not having any content of true value up lately. Just haven't been inspired. And I've been kind of busy, so I've just been throwing up uh, little things here and there just to keep the page uh, semi-fresh. Um, but I thought I'd throw up something today that is, uh, I think, very relevant in our world. And I don't see too many people talking about it in this light. So I thought, what the heck, I'll do my best to try to do a video on this particular topic. And obviously it's controllers. You have your game, you have your game system. Those work perfectly. Now the most important part you need is one of these things. One of the biggest problems we run into, though, is... Uh, you know, a lot of these things are 20 to 30 years old, and they're starting to fail, and they don't function as proper as they should. And I would like to discuss that rather than the actual controllers themselves, because how many times can someone review a Super Nintendo controller, right? I mean, we all know what that feels and looks like. So, I want to give you kind of a very, very, very basic how-to slash tech um little topic here and maybe you know if you didn't know already some of the stuff I'm going to discuss it will inspire you to be you know uh, creative with what you do with your stuff here um, so first of all I just want to get into if you're going to pull apart a controller first of all it's not rocket surgery and I know I said that wrong that's my funny um, there's really not much to it I will show you the interior of a controller here in a minute but if you're going to do it, you know, please be smart about it. Do it at your own risk and that kind of stuff. I don't want to be responsible if you destroy something um, or if you get hurt. Not that there's a lot of things that you could get hurt doing this, but you're still going to be using tools as basic as they are. So please just be careful because, you know, you want to keep all your fingers so they'll depress every one of these buttons and you can enjoy your retro video games. Now, another side note, because I like to ramble, I didn't choose Super Nintendo and Genesis because... Um, part of the 16-bit wars, I'm not poking on anything there, but these controllers in particular is a perfect example of, of topic number one here. First topic in controllers is you have to find one that's damn comfortable for your hands, okay? If it's not comfortable in your hands, you're going to get fatigued, you're not going to play for long, and you're going to blame it on the game. When I had ten times, it's the controller itself. So what we got here is, I'll just pull this sucker out. A Super Nintendo controller, we all know it, we all love it. Perfectly sized D-pad, the buttons are in the right place, they, they feel great. Uh, that dog bone shape just kind of cradles in your hand like putty. Um, but you'll notice, I got sausage fingers and I have a large hand, okay? So as well as this works, and it does, um, it just doesn't work for me um, as well as it could. So I had to go out and explore different controllers and you know that's that's part of it there too exploration it's fun and you never know where you're gonna find it um, recently I was able to acquire something like this for a super uh, super Nintendo and one of my favorite controls of all time is the Genesis one that's why I got so many up here um, and you'll notice it's somewhat similar in shape but size is where I'm going with this one and yes size does matter um, this one just fits in my hand better uh, the D-pad's a little smaller, but that's okay. It's got it's got some great curves to it, so each you know you you know you're pressing down and up and side and side. And the buttons are a little uh, M and M-y, but uh, meaning the candy, but they work perfect and and it just fits in my hand perfect. My hand doesn't get fatigued when I'm playing, uh, say Final Fight. You know when you're constantly uh, you know wrenching on it. So there's your first battle right there. Find one that's comfortable for you. Um, Put those aside now. You notice I got a couple different uh, Genesis controllers here, and they're all different shapes and sizes. This is your standard one, and that's my favorite controller of all time. And it's simply just because of the size and how the D pad is on a pivot and the great size buttons. And <clears throat> excuse me, allergy season's here, so I'm gonna be wheezing and, 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 and snorting a lot, and I apologize, but you'll deal with it. Um, but back to this sexy sucker. Um, it's just a great controller. Now, if you play Genesis and you have smaller hands or you just prefer something like this, I mean, I like the six-button layout. I don't know why they made them smaller. Um, it works well, but for my hands, 
I don't prefer this. So unless I'm playing like Street Fighter or something like that, I don't really even use this too often. But I still have it around because it's you know it's part of my Sega collection. Then you get stuff like this, which tries to blend the two together. And this is comfortable in my hands, but the buttons are too big for what it is, and it, and it works fine. And this one also comes into play from an X point too, so I'm going to leave that in the frame. But, you know, that's I, as simple as it gets, you know, explore. Look around, hold controllers, play them, go to your buddy's house, try different things. Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, try uh, alternatives. Now, you have a control that fits perfectly in your hand, but how many times have you been playing a game and you, damn it, I hit that button or, you know, I shot that dude or I kicked him in the nuts or, you know, whatever the problem is and you blame the controller and you throw the friggin' thing and... Everyone laughs at you because they're like, no, it's not the controller, you just suck. But maybe you do suck, but there is a lot of truth to the it's the controller. The problem is that these are 20, 30 years old, and uh, they're going to fail. So there's two main reasons I'm going to talk about now, other than just actual electronic failure. We're not going to go there. I'm not going to give you a, a lesson in how to, how to solder and, and, and diodes and doodads and resistors and all that crap. Uh, I'm going to give you very basic repair knowledge. But in order to repair something like this, <coughs> excuse me, you got to know how it works. And that's that, that that's 100% of it right there. So what I, I prepared here is I got a very basic controller board. And this is, this is typical of what most of our retro controllers look like inside. Now this one's obviously a lot smaller. And if you need to know, it came out of a Hyperkin NES um, knockoff that came with a retro duo, but I figured, you know, I don't use that, so if anything screwed up while I was doing this video, I didn't care. But this is generally what everything looks like inside of any of these controllers until you start getting the thumbsticks and stuff like that, but it's very basic. And what you basically have, excuse me, so I had to grab a tool, is you have your D-pad right here, and then over here you have your A and B buttons, you're starting to select. Um, and if the camera will focus on it, and I hope it does, if you look real close at the uh, contact point, what you have here is a series of lines that aren't connected. Um, this one you can see really well right now, I guess. Um, and what that basically does, and just for you know, example, I don't know which way the electricity is flowing on this particular board. I haven't looked at it long enough. But let's just say it's coming from this direction here because it looks like it's going into the wire over here. Um, you get electricity coming in, okay? And it stops right here. Until what happens is you connect every one of these lines, and then it creates a bridge for the electricity to flow through, go into the line, connect to where the wire is, and it goes up the little wire, and out your little controller, uh, you know, this deal here, and into your machine, and it tells it he pressed right, up, right, down, down and right, you know, so be it, whatever. And uh, that's basically how a controller works. Now, there's two common things that fail when it comes to these. And the first thing is, is right here on the board itself. There is still electricity going through this, as minute as it is, as little electricity that goes through it. But whenever you have an electrical contact, carbon will always build up. Now, I used to work corrections. I had to retire because of health reasons. And I learned this because of our radios wouldn't transmit very well. And we found out that if you unscrewed the uh, antenna, and clean that out where the carbon was building up, they would work perfectly. So we actually made that a maintenance thing. Um, same thing goes for these contacts here. So what I recommend you do, try try to stay away from solvents and liquids. Um, isopropyl alcohol will work as long as you clean the board afterwards and dry it off perfectly. Um, I would actually let it sit for a day. Don't use rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol has glycerin in it. Okay, glycerin will leave a film and will build up gunk and you'll just be doing this over and over again. So go get yourself a pencil. Everyone has a box of pencils in the drawer in the kitchen and use the eraser on these things and just you know rub back and forth until you get a nice shiny contact that looks very similar to these here. And once you do one you'll see the rest of them look completely different even if it didn't look like it was dirty at first. And um, once you do that to all the main points here this board is fine, uh, providing you don't have any, you know, 
loose solder joints or anything like that, but we're not, again, going into that part. Now, part two to why these things fail a lot <clears throat> is this thing right here, and this is where we're really going to get into it. This is what's underneath the button you press and what makes the contact on the board, okay? Um, I just call it a controller top hat. I don't know if there's an actual name for it. But it's generally a piece of rubber with this little black stamp in the middle. And I don't know what the material is on that stamp, but when, when you press this down, it forces that black stamp to create that bridge we just discussed, okay? Um, and the only way I can describe this is now that you know what it looks like in the shape of it, when you press down on your controller, you will feel if it's working or not. Um, if it doesn't feel like the whole thing is just collapsing in on itself evenly and perfectly and with resistance, then you know this thing has failed. Um, when they feel mushy or you don't hear a snap, and we'll get into the snap in a minute, this thing has failed. And uh, it's not necessarily contact, it's just, uh, it could be only collapsing on one side or just, it's, this is gone. And this is why I like to cannibalize controllers. So what I do is I go to all my Goodwills and stuff, and I buy cheap controllers, even if, say, like, one or two of the buttons are broken. I will pick it up for two or three bucks or whatever, and I will keep it around for parts. Um, you could always go to eBay and buy a refurbished kit for any of these controllers. I've seen them out there. I don't know what they cost. But personally, if I go into a Goodwill and I pick a controller up like this, and everything works pretty much except for maybe the B button feels gross, um, but everything else is good. Then you get yourself a perfect candidate to Frankenstein for the right controller. Now, having two or three really good controllers is, is advantageous. Is that even the right word? I don't know. Leave a comment below and let me know if I just screwed that up. It's, we're, it's basically what we're after here. And that's what this sucker is. This is my complete customized controller. It's a Frodo Genesis, obviously. Um, it's not an official Genesis controller. That's why I didn't mind <clears throat> experimenting with this one as far as, like, painting and all that crap. And whenever I need a killer controller, I reach for the Jason. And um, this is the one I like to take out when I go to Retro Nights and such. Um, it was a rental controller. It used to have a Blockbuster sticker here, which I got rid of. Now, what I do is I replace the rubber thing here, which is different than these ones. This one's an actual, it's about the same shape as this. You know, don't get confused by that. Um, I replaced all that. I cleaned the board, plugged it back in, and this thing is perfect. Now, I got two more controls, like this one here. Same thing. And how do you know a controller is going to work very well? Well, first of all, you got to try it. But if you don't have the opportunity to try it, there's what I call a snap test. And if you hit the button and you hear that snap, you're good to go in most cases. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that the electronics work inside, but as long as you can hit the buttons and you get that. Now, Nintendo controls, the NESs, if you hit the B and the A buttons and they don't do that, then you've got a junk controller. Um, but I got an example over here to show you <clears throat> what I'm exactly talking about. The buttons that were in the Jason controller actually came out of here, the rubber top hats. Um, I put them in this controller for this purpose alone, just to show. Um, if I press this button here, the Z, you hear this kind of like little... I'll hit it hard. These ones I left alone, they're perfect, they work great. This controller was a little messed up, that's why I chose to cannibalize this one. Because of all this, there's something going on funky with the turbo. Um, so don't ruin good controllers. But if I press the C button, you hear... That snap I'm talking about. Now I'll hit the Z button the same way. And they're all the same. Now oh, the A button sounds like it's going out. But um, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Some controls are made to be mushy, but that's what you're looking for. Nice snap. So, after all that, you know, I kind of just rushed through it. Um, I'll wire up a coffee. Didn't have a script because I never work off of scripts. And I'll probably try to record this again. I don't know how well it came out, but I hope with any of this information, uh, you know, I encourage you to go out and experiment a little bit with controllers because again, these things are 20, 30 years old. They're failing. They can discourage you from certain things like a harder game that actually can be made a little easier by having the right controller or just the system itself a lot of people don't collect for the genesis i don't know why i like it 
I've had one for years. And I just want to make sure I have everything that's working properly. And that's how I do it with controllers. So, with that, guys, don't be afraid to open them up. Look at them. If you buy a junk one for two or three bucks, so what? what are you gonna, what, what's going to harm? Open the thing up. Figure out how it works, why it works, and then you'll understand how to make it work better. And with all that, I hope, uh, I hope you go out there and do that. And um, I would love to see any videos of you guys actually repairing them or showing them examples of shitty controllers and then uh, before and afters. And it um, be great to see that. So, guys, I hope any of this information helped out. Um, and as always, you know, thank you for subscribing and supporting this channel. It's I know it's not the greatest one on the planet, but... It's what I love, and, uh, you know, your support means a lot to me. So, guys, no shout-outs today, only because I'm sure you're sick of hearing about the same people, Paco Paco, you know, uh, Round 2 Gamers, people like that. You know, I know uh, Barry on Mars is the one to hear his name on, on the Internet, again, because he's probably sick and tired of it. You know, the Cartridge Brothers hate that shit. And, uh, you know, so I'm not going to mention any of those guys. So no shout-outs today for anybody. But this is uh, the Atari creep, hoping that you experiment, open up, play with these things. Don't destroy them and blame me. But if you destroy them, learn from it. And uh, that's it. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. It is Mother's Day today uh, to all you moms and all you single dads. And uh, until next time, guys, the Atari creep is going to sign out and he's going to say, Mr. Paco Paco, goodbye.